Good morning, boys and girls. Our new chapter today in Farmer Boy is called Late Harvest. So yesterday's chapter was Early Harvest. We heard about haying time. Um, they also were preparing beans and drinking a lot of eggnog. I know you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we are going to be hearing about Late Harvest next. So harvesting is basically just getting something from the field or ground. And there are certain things that um, need to be pulled at different times. So we heard about the early ones. Now we're going to hear about late harvesting. So it looks like some pumpkins and apples, right? Those might be things that they are going to start gathering in our chapter today. So I'm going to present over to the book to follow along. And let's start hearing about the harvest time. Now the harvest moon shone round and yellow over the fields at night, and there was a frosty chill in the air. What do you think the harvest moon is? Harvest moon. It's actually the full moon that happens close to the um, like start of autumn, basically, start of fall. So it's the full harvest moon. And all the corn was cut and it stood in tall shocks. Remember those are the big columns. The moon cast their black shadows on the ground where the pumpkins lay naked above their withered leaves. Almanzo's milk fed pumpkin was enormous. He cut it carefully from the vine, but he could not lift it. He could not even roll it, um, roll it over. Father lifted it into the wagon and carefully hauled it to the barn and laid it on some hay to wait till county fair time. We're going to hear about that county fair next week. All the other pumpkins Almanza rolled into piles, and Father hauled them to the barn. The best ones were put in the cellar to make pumpkin pies, and the rest were piled on the south barn floor. Every night, Almanza cut up some of them with a hatchet and fed them to the cows and calves and oxen. The apples were also ripe. Almanzo and Royal and Father set ladders against the trees and climbed into the leafy tops. They picked every perfect apple carefully and laid it in a basket. Father drove the wagon full of baskets slowly to the house, and Almanzo helped carry the baskets down cellar and lay the apples carefully in the apple bins. They didn't bruise one apple. Do you remember haste makes, or actually we didn't do haste makes waste. Um, it was like, all waste is sinful from the last chapter. That's what um, mother said, and that's why Almanzo had some eggnog. For a bruised apple will um, will rot. That's why they didn't bruise the apple. And one rotten apple will spoil a whole bin. That's a good idiom, actually. Because in this case, they're talking about literally, if there's one rotten apple, it's going to make all the other apples rotten, which you might see at home sometimes if you've got like a bowl of fresh fruit if one thing has gone bad, it makes the other things go bad. But it also is used to talk about a person who was like a bad influence. They're going to spoil the other kids and make them um, misbehave. Now, the cellar began to have its winter smell of apples and preserves. Mother's milk pans had been moved upstairs to the pantry till spring came again. After the perfect apples had all been picked, Almanzo and Royal could shake the trees. That was fun. They shook the trees with all their might and the apples came rattling down like hail. They picked them up and threw them into the wagon. They were only cider apples. So apparently those don't need to be, or they can be bruised because they're not going to be eaten um, whole. Instead, they're gonna be made into cider. Almanza took a bite of out of one whenever he wanted to. Now it was time to gather the garden stuff. Father hauled the apples away to the cider mill but Almanzo had to stay at home pulling beets and turnips and parsnips and carrying them down cellar. He pulled the onions. So these are all of the root vegetables that are underneath the ground. And Alice braided their tri tops into long braids. The round onions hung thick on both sides of the braids and mother hung them in the attic. Almanzo pulled the pepper plants while Alice threaded her darning needle and strung red peppers like beads on a string. They were hung up beside the onions. Father came back that night with two big hogsheads of cider. Now, a hogshead of cider, a hogshead is 
um, a huge barrel. You might think it's like the size of a hogshead, but it's, um, let me look it up. It's specifically over, yeah, it's huge. It's about 63 to 140 gallons. It's a ton. So approximately we can estimate at 100 gallons worth of cider. That's what um, they're gonna be filling it with. Wow. Now he rolled them down cellar. There was plenty of cider to last till next apple harvest. Next morning, a cold wind was blowing and storm clouds were rolling up against a gray sky. Father started to look worried. Carrots and potatoes must be dug quickly. I, best they, I guess they need it before um, there's a storm. And I think it's specifically since it's a cold wind, they don't want it to start snowing. Now, Almanza put on his socks and moccasins, his cap and coat and mittens. And Alice put on her hood and shawl. She was going to help. Good for Alice. Now, Father hitched Vess and Beauty to the plow and turned a furrow away from each side of the long row of carrots. That left the carrots standing in a thin ridge of earth so they were easy to pull. That seems really smart. Now, Almanzo and Alice pulled them as fast as they could, and Royal cut off the feathery tops and threw the carrots in the wagon. They are all working hard, other than Eliza Jane must be inside. Father hauled them to the house and shoveled them down a chute into the carrot bins in the cellar. The little red seeds that Almanzo and Alice planted had grown into 200 bushels of carrots. Wow. Mother could cook all she wanted, and the horses and cows could eat raw carrots all winter. So the carrots are for the family and for the animals. Lazy John came to help with the potato digging. Father and John dug the potatoes with hose while Alice and Almanzo picked them up and put them in baskets and emptied the baskets into a wagon. Now Royal left an empty wagon in the field while he hauled the full one to the house and shoveled the potatoes through the cellar window into the potato bins. Almanzo and Alice hurried to fill the empty wagon while he was gone. They hardly stopped at noon to eat. They worked at night until it was too dark to see. They didn't get the potatoes into the cellar before the ground froze. All the year's work in the potato field would be lost. Oh, that would be devastating if they've been working all year long to make sure those potatoes were ready to pull and then it'd be ruined. Father would have to buy potatoes. I never saw such weather for the time of year, Father said. Kind of like that um, Indep Independence Day freeze, remember? Now, early in the morning before the sun rose, they were hard at work again. The sun did not rise at all. Thick gray clouds hung low overhead. The ground was cold and the potatoes were cold and a sharp cold wind blew gritty dust into Almanzo's eyes. He and Alice were sleepy. They tried to hurry, but their fingers were so cold that they fumbled and dropped potatoes. Alice said, my nose is so cold. We have ear muffs. Why can't we have nose muffs? Well, that's basically the face mask, right? <laughs> it's kind of what she needs. Um, Almanzo told father that they were cold and father told him, get a hustle on son. Exercise will keep you warm. Mm, that's a good quote. Exercise will keep you warm. That's why I tell people at recess if we were to have recess in person because running around definitely keeps you warm. They tried, but they were too cold to hustle very fast. The next time father came digging near them, he said, make a bonfire of the dry potato tops, Almanzo. That will warm you. So Alice and Almanzo gathered an enormous pile of potato tops. Father gave Almanzo a match. I'm gonna bring a little closer. And he lighted the bonfire. The little flame grabbed a dry leaf, then it ran eagerly up a stem and it crackled and spread and rushed roaring into the air. It seemed to make the whole field warmer. For a long time, they all worked busily. Whenever Almanzo was too cold, he ran and piled more potato tops on the fire. Alice held out her grubby hands to warm them and the fire shone on her face like sunshine. Okay, I'm hungry, Almanzo said. So be I, said Alice. It must be almost dinner time. Almanzo couldn't tell by the shadows because there was no sunshine. They worked and they worked and still they did not hear the dinner horn. Almanzo was all hollow inside. He said to Alice, 
before we get to the end of this row, we'll hear it. But they didn't. Almanza decided something must have happened to the horn. <laughs> he said to father, I guess it's dinner time. John laughed at him and father said, it's hardly the middle of the morning, son. Oh, goodness. He thinks it's ready to go. And by dinner, he means like lunchtime. But it is not even mid-morning. Almanza just went on picking potatoes. Then father called, put a potato in the ashes, Almanzo. That'll take the edge off of, the, off of your appetite. So he's going to cook a potato. Putting it in the ashes is going to keep it warm. Now, Almanza put two big potatoes in the hot ashes, one for him and one for Alice. He piled hot ashes over them, and he piled more potato tops on the fire. He knew he should get back to work, but he just stood in the pleasant heat, waiting for the potatoes to bake. Ooh, he's not really helping, is he? He did not feel comfortable in his mind, but he did feel warm inside, outside. And he said to himself, I have to stay here to roast the potatoes. Oh, does he really need to be there? No, just like if you, um, if your family is baking something in the oven, you don't really have to watch over it. It's just in the oven. You've just got to wait until it's the time's up for the most part. So he doesn't have to be there, but he's telling himself that because he wants to stay by the warmth. He felt bad because he was letting Alice work all alone, but he thought, I'm busy roasting a potato for her. Well, he is, but he's really just trying to be lazy. Suddenly, he heard a soft hissing puff and something hit his face. <gasps> it stuck on his face, scalding hot. He yelled and yelled. The pain was terrible and he could not see. He heard shouts and running. Big hands snatched his hands from his face and father's hands tipped back his head. Lazy John was talking French and Alice was crying, oh father, oh father. What is it? Open your eyes, son, father said. Almanza tried, but he could get only one open. Father's thumb pushed up the other eyelid and it hurt. Father said, it's all right, the eyes not hurt. One of the roasting potatoes had exploded and the scalding hot inside of it had hit Almanzo. But the eyelid had closed just in time. Good, your reflexes help protect you. So his eyelid closed just in the nick of time to prevent him from getting burned. Only the eyelid and his cheek ended up getting burned. So not too bad. Father tied his handkerchief over the eye and he and Lazy John went back to work. Here he is with that handkerchief over his eye. Now Almanzo hadn't known that anything could hurt like that burn, but he told Alice that it didn't hurt much. He took a stick and dug the other potato out of the ashes. I guess it's your potato, he snuffled. He was not crying, only tears kept running out of his eyes and down inside his nose. No, it's yours, Alice said. It was my potato that exploded. How do you know which one it was? Almanzo said, asked. This one's yours because you're hurt and I'm not hungry. Anyway, not very hungry, said Alice. You're as hungry as I be. Almanzo said. He could not bear to be selfish anymore. You eat half, he told Alice, and I'll eat half. The potato was burned black outside, but the inside was white and mealy, and the most delicious baked potato smell steamed out of it. You guys like baked potatoes? Making me hungry. They let it cool a little, and then they gnawed the inside out of the black crust, and it was the best potato they had ever eaten. There they are eating their potato. Nice little baked potato. That was very kind of Almanza to share with Alice. She wants him to have it because he's hurt, but he wants her to have it because she was busy working and he was just sitting by the fire. They felt better and went back to work. Almanza's face was blistered and his eye was swelled shut, but mother put a poultice on it at noon and another at night. The next day it did not hurt so much. Just after dark on the third day, he and Alice followed the last load of potatoes to the house. The weather was growing colder every minute. Father shoveled the potatoes into the cellar by lantern light, while Royal and Almanzo did all the chores. They had barely saved the potatoes. That very night, the ground froze. 
oh, it's a good thing they rushed to do their work, wasn't it? If they hadn't have rushed, it's possible they wouldn't have finished it. A miss is as good as a mile, mother said. But father shook his head. Too close to suit me, he said. Next thing will be snow. We'll have to hustle to get the beam and corn under cover. Now, a miss is as good as a mile. That's a phrase that means, basically, if you lose something, it doesn't matter if you are close or um, if you're a long way away, it's still just loss. And if you win at something, like they got all the potatoes out. Well, that, um, it, even if they were close um, to not being able to get it, they were done. But father thinks we need to improve next time. We need to make sure that we take care of everything even before um, or well before the freeze starts. He put the hay rack on the wagon and Royal and Almanzo helped him haul the beans. They pulled up the bean stakes and laid them in the wagon, beans and all. They worked carefully, for a jar would shake the beans out of the dry pods and waste them. When they'd piled all the beans on the South Barn floor, they hauled in the shocks of corn. The crops had been so good that even Father's great barn roofs would not shel shelter all the harvest. So that's why they have that big barn for all of this, and it's not even enough. Several loads of corn shocks had to be put in the barnyard and father made a fence around them to keep them safe from the young cattle. All the harvest was in now. Cellar and attic and the barns were stuffed to bursting. Plenty of food and plenty of feed for all the stock and was stored away for the winter. Everyone could stop working for a while and have a good time at the county fair. Wow, they worked hard and they have filled up the barn. Basically, they are ready for winter time. Um, I'm not sure exactly when this is, but it's right around, um, well, the harvest moon is a hint uh, that it is right around the beginning of audit, autumn, which is September, oh, what's the first day of autumn? Just a moment. Um, September 22nd, yeah, so, um, early September for us would be pretty warm, um, but in New York state where they have much longer winters, their winter starts before us and it ends before ends after us. So they've filled up everything they need for themselves, for their animals and enough to sell even. And we're gonna find out the county fair next chapter. Monday, we'll start reading this chapter, hearing about Almanzo's milk fed pumpkin. He's going to hopefully get a prize for it. That's the goal. He's growing this big pumpkin to try to be the biggest pumpkin of all. So we'll see if he gets it. Okay, that's all boys and girls. Enjoy the story. I hope that um, you have a wonderful rest of your day as well. I'll talk to you later. Bye.